Welcome to the Jazzy Eyes Podcast, taking care of your vision with expert precision. Here's your host, Dr. Twee Nguyen. Hello, hello, and welcome everyone to the Jazzy Eyes Podcast. I'm your host, Jer- I'm your co host, I'm sorry, I'm Jer- co host, Jeremy Wolf, and I'm joined by your host, Dr. Twee Nguyen. Yes. Dr. Nguyen, hello. always a pleasure. Yes. I'm I'm so used to doing my own podcast. I'm just like, hey, I'm your I'm your host, right? Why not? <laughs> yes. Why not? Why not? Why not? And I even have my uh, my background up here for the Good Neighbor podcast, but that's oh, okay. Oh yes, I see. So we hope you've been well since the last time we spoke, and um, you know, thanks to our listeners for tuning in. I just finished uh, a segment with Dr. Falco where she talked a little bit about um, blepharitis, and I I know you were going to talk a little bit about. Uh, dry eyes on a more, yeah. I guess, on a broader scale. So please share with us uh, your thoughts on that subject. Yeah. So dry eyes, everyone has dry eyes. Everyone and their mothers has dry eyes. So what is dry eyes? Dry eyes is basically like an, an inflammation cycle. So what happens at first is the layer of uh, fluid covering our eyes. When you have dry eyes, it becomes unstable. And it's not, it doesn't wet the whole surface of the eyes as it should. There are spots of dryness. And so over time, those dryness can actually end up damaging the cells on our cornea, that front part of our eyes. And when those cells get damaged and they die, then that starts the whole inflammation process. When that inflammation process happens, then that leads back to the instable tear film. And it goes as a cycle as Uh, you have unstable tear film, then you have cell death, and then you have inflammation. And so it's a sorry, You you said unstable tear foam? Tear film. Tear Tear film. film. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So the tears, our tears are made out of um, liquid oils and actually a little bit of mucus and all those work together to form our tear film. Interesting. Yes. And so um, that's why some people with uh, instable tear film or dry eyes experience any burning, redness, itching, or any gritty or sandy feeling of the eyes. Funny enough, people who complain that, oh, their eyes are always tearing is also a sign of dry eyes. Just because we're producing those tears that are, uh, our eyes are so dry that it's our, our glands are producing more and more tears to compensate for that dryness. And so people get teary eyed. So if you're suffering from just a general dry eyes, I'd imagine there are over-the-counter eye drops you could use for that, but then yeah. also you wouldn't want to use them too much. You'd probably want to go get that checked out. What, what would you recommend for someone that is looking for, you know, maybe they have some dry eyes and they, they just want to get something to kind of help the issue? Uh, what, what, what would you recommend they get, you know, over-the-counter yes. anyway? So when you go into the -the over-the-counter, you're like bombarded with all these eye drops and you don't know which one to get. I usually tell people to get um, either uh, uh, refresh or sustain. Those are what I've used that I I like them. So I recommend it to my patients. I tell my patients not to use Visine because a lot of people who use Visine, they tend to have irritation and even more redness from before they started Visine. And so I tell them just to be safe, over-the-counter, um, like a uh, refresh or sustain. See, it's interesting. W- why is it that Visine or what's the, what's the primary difference between something like Visine and refresh and these other brands that are less, I guess, less damaging to the eyes. So Visine, sometimes they have a little preservative that people are not, uh, th- that they find irritating on their eyes. And the main mechanism of Visine to make your eyes look brighter and whiter, they constrict the blood vessels or the arteries that's on your eyes. But when when our, our arteries bring oxygen and blood to the eyes, so when you constrict it, you're cutting off the oxygen su- supplies to go to the eyes. So when Visine wears off, your arteries actually double in size, and so they look even redder than before you started using Visines. See, that's interesting because Visine obviously has done such a phenomenal job branding mm-hmm. their their company as uh, or their product around. as when people think of eye drops, yes. they, they think immediately of Visine, right? It's synonymous with that. Right. So that's, I tell them not to use Visine. I tell my patients to throw the Visine right away, right in my office. Right. <laughs> and then that's I tell right. them that there are oh, there are prescription medications that can help the dry eyes. And these prescription medications, they work at different levels of the dry eyes to treat the dry eyes. 
For example, there is a prescription medication called Zydra. And what that does is it prevents inflammation by blocking inflammatory markers called cytokines. And so that kind of stops the dry eye cycle from the beginning. There are other drops, they're called sequa and restasis, which not only um, prevents the or, or minimizes the inflammation, it also produces, a, a, it um, makes our tear gland produce more tears. And then there's a new medication that recently came out called Mybo. And the nature of the drop itself, not only it gives you an even wetting, it, the, the drops evenly wet the surface of your eyes, it also prevents the tears from evaporating as quick. So there are other, not over-the-counter medications, but prescription medications for those with more moderate or severe dry eyes where over-the-counters won't do them you know, justice. Putting medication aside for a moment, yes. are there any tips or recommendations you could make for just natural things that you could, because we're, we're, we're also tuned in on our screens all day, every day, and our eyes are co constantly stressed. Are there any suggestions that you can make for just, again, going out, like, like you know, what I'm thinking is taking a break every once in a while, just go outside, be in nature, just take your eyes off the screens. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, so when people are on their computer, they blink less. So if you're on a screen, I recommend having a artificial tear uh, tears right next to you just to use when your eyes are feeling a little dry and to take more frequent breaks. Um, also, when you're sleeping, some people sleep with a fan on. And so people, when they sleep, most people don't close their eyes fully all the way. And so when the fan is on, it's drying out the bottom of your, your, your eyes. As well as when you're in the car, some people have their ACs blasting right into their face. And that also makes dry eyes a little bit worse. So it's a little, it's little stuff like this that you can change in your daily routines to help manage your dry eye symptoms. Very cool. And yeah. of course, as always, is something I just learned. Um, I didn't just learn it, but make sure you get your eyes checked routinely. Obviously, yeah. like any other, anything else in life, preventative, be, being uh, diligent on prevent on the preventative side is usually yeah. what will ultimately help you long term, long term. Of yeah. Course, so. And even coming to get your eyes examined, uh, examined, there are some office procedures that we can do to help uh, manage the dry eyes, like punctal plugs, where we put little collagen plugs in the in the tear ducts to prevent the, the tears from draining as quickly. So our eyes are more moisturized throughout the day. Or maybe even like heat therapy, where some people put um, uh, heat pads onto their eyes to help the the, the oil glands liquefy. And so there's more oils on the eyes to prevent the tears from evaporating as quickly. All right. Very good. Dr. Nguyen, always a pleasure. Thank you for sharing those little, little nuggets of insight and wisdom. And I'll you know, we'll look forward to getting into another segment soon. And thanks to our listeners for tuning in. And we will see you on the next episode. Everyone take care. Thank you for listening to the Jazzy Eyes podcast. For more information, visit jazzyeyes.com or contact 954-473-0100.